Okay. It's not allowing me, Lauren Ashley. Lauren Ashley, can you pull it up? So you're the host now, Greg. Okay. And okay. welcome to everyone who's joining us live. Um, it's not allowing me, Lauren Ashley. There you go. Thank you for everyone who's joining us live on YouTube. Um, this is a recorded session, but we still want to hear your feedback. So we'll pass it back over to your Great Plains representative. Should I just, should I read this? Or? You could probably just read the the background, and then we'll from there you could just recognize the youth councils within the Great Plains, and then we'll go into the question right after that. So our background is the Great Plains region consists of ge geographical areas in the states of North Dakota, South Dakota, and Nebraska. National Unity Network consists of 325 affiliated youth councils in 36 states. The Great Plains region has 12 affiliated youth councils in three states within the Unity Network. The Great Plains region, region youth councils consist of MHA Youth Leadership Council in North Dakota, Turtle Mountain Chippewa Unity Council in North Dakota, Warrior Unity Youth Council in North Dakota, ANA Empowering Our Youth in North Dakota, Fort Berthel Unity Chapter in North Dakota, Sisseton Wapton Youth Council in North Dakota, Santee Sioux Nation Youth Council in Nebraska, Lincoln Native Youth in Nebraska, St. Francis Indian School Council in South Dakota, RST Defending Childhood Initiative, Kangu Youth Council in South Dakota, Alive Alive Roberts County Youth Council in South Dakota, and Ugala Sioux Youth Council in South Dakota. Okay, and uh, Representative uh, Fox and those on the call, uh, based on our master youth council listing in the Unity Office, this is the listing of all the youth councils within the Great Plains. And for those on the call, I just wanted just to share that um, during the pandemic, uh, one of our interns in the office uh, began to work on uh, the master youth council listing. Uh, as mentioned, we have over 325 affiliated youth councils in 36 states. And so what we noticed during the pandemic is that a lot of our youth councils became very inactive during the two, two year period. And we here at Unity uh, completely understand that tribal governments, youth organizations, nonprofits, have been hurt during this time period. It's affected a lot of our tribal communities uh, where tribes were forced to uh, place restrictions on programs, uh, participation in person. And a lot of the activity that we see today through the Unity Youth Network is that a lot of youth councils are now beginning to do things virtually. So. We wanted just to share with you that we at Unity completely understand uh, what young people and what Indian countries gone through the last two years. And, you know, we're slowly coming out of this pandemic, but we understand that there's still restrictions and we have respect for those tribal governments uh, because it's all about keeping our tribal people and our tribal young people safe during this time. So. We completely understand, and that's the whole purpose of why we wanted to bring you here together through the executive committee, uh, our representative, Mr. Fox, uh, to reach out to the Great Plains region. And so with that, uh, Representative Fox, we have the question. And again, this is open dialogue for all of you. So I'll leave it with you, Mr. Fox. Our question is, what is, our, what is your youth council doing to connect with the youth during the COVID-19 pandemic? Would anyone like to start that off? Okay. 
Riley or Hiana. We do some unity activities for the youth at our school. For Indigenous Peoples Day, we did some activities for the little kids up to high school. So our for the for the White Shield and like for the MHA Youth Leadership uh, Council, we uh, they also to connect with the with the youth during the COVID nineteen uh, pandemic. They um, for any like event that comes up, we uh, try to involve ourselves in the chapter to help out. Um, with uh, the events and to really um, help uh, the younger kids and the even the older kids and the community to show them about what unity is about and why our chapter um, can bring to our community. Okay. So can I engage for a second as the advisor for our chapter, what we've been doing, because we are a small community, we have, we have all our grades in one school. And so because of COVID, we are finding, like you were, you were saying that um, we find that the students are doing things more online. For us, it's kind of the opposite because of the, the fact that we are a smaller community. Um, we find that we find more engagement while they're at school. Mm -hmm. And we practice all the proper COVID, you know, restrictions or, you know, requirements for our students. We make sure that we have the proper sanitation and wipes and Lysol. When we were doing our, like um, what Riley was saying, we had a day where it was Indigenous Peoples Day. We did activities. The kids actually, our unity chapter were the ones that were um, involved with our younger students. So we're looking at kindergarten, first grade. So they're hearing about unity even at this very young age from our high schoolers. And um, it was kind of crazy because we were worried, we're worried about COVID all the time. So we were spraying everything down, we're chasing out, you know, we're making sure that all these requirements are being met. So we find as a smaller community, sometimes it's harder to get them online because we've been online teaching and learning online. And it's just gotten to the point where some of our students and staff it just is exhausting to just be online. So we found that, you know, as being a smaller school, you do have to be more cautious no matter what with this COVID, with COVID. But um, we were really lucky in our community where we do have, um, we have an awesome staff at the, our clinic that really encourages the vaccinations and making sure that a lot of our students are taken care of so that we can continue to have events within our school is really important. We actually lost, like you said, that connection, right? And so with our students being in the classrooms um, or even just going straight to the classroom and not really holding a big event, sometimes is really good. Um, for um, our Veterans Day, what our students did was write what it meant to them to be a veteran. And we were supposed to actually go and they were gonna read them. For, for the community and for, for that event. But as COVID works, sometimes we just get cases and we do have to go back online. And that's what happened that week. So they were not able to share those, those with them readily. And, um, but we were lucky that we were, we, we still were able to share them. So there's the power of technology and there's also the power of other people getting there or helping us out. So we did have, we were grateful that the um, auxiliary from our area was able to help us out in that manner because we did have some people that were out with COVID. So that's kind of what we've been doing. Um, and uh, we've tried to like stray away from, like I said, the online, just for the simple fact that everybody is just yearning for that connection again. That's what we yeah. all are really yearning for that. It's really good to hear Margaret, because yes, we definitely, young people need that human 
interaction element, which is so important to their uh, education and just just being together, you know. And I know that during our last conference in Dallas, it was just awesome to see our young people just be so happy because they were just connecting, you know. So yes, we definitely miss that. So that's really good that uh, your tribe and your school is doing that. So that's good. Uh, well, Margaret just said about the veteran thing. I was there um, supporting my, um, my family members that were in the veterans, that are veterans that couldn't make it. And uh, from what I could tell and like see while they were reading the uh, papers from the students, they they seemed to really enjoy that the um, that the that the that the students uh, acknowledged and could really um, um, just uh, like just to uh, honor the veterans like that. And it's it's pretty it's pretty cool. I think there might be a few people that might have written it, like Jesse Bell. Jesse Bell, you wrote a paper, didn't you? And who else? We have a Zoom user. But, um, You might want to just go down the list and just get some thoughts, uh, Justice. Yeah. All right. So next question is, what kind of resources could Unity offer? Oh. Right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I was going to say you could uh, maybe continue with the question, but go down the list of oh. those on the call. I was going <laughs> to right. Okay. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're doing good. Thank you. Um, Elwood, I, I didn't get to attend your meeting, so I'd like to hear about your youth council? Yeah, so um, I believe that, you know, throughout this whole COVID experience, everyone has um, faced similar issues. And um, as I believe Margaret, Margaret was saying, um, the uh, Zoom aspect of it, it's really tough because, you know, throughout doing um, schoolwork, um, school meetings, it gets really tiring. And that's not my experience through it as well as, you know, even, even looking at the screen for too long gives me migraines. So like that's a complication in itself that other members may um, feel as well. But um, as we talked about a lot um, in, in my regional meetup, um, I believe it was um, trying, you know, trying to do their best um, to keep everyone involved. So like, even though things were on Zoom, um, if available, in terms of small capacities, um, they'd have different events um, in terms to like movie nights, game nights. And if it, if it couldn't be done in person, then they would do it in um, in Zoom. But so like something I brought up as well um, was throughout my whole time in Unity before the, the pandemic for, for my youth council, I can't speak for anyone else's, but it's always been, um, what can we do for the community? Um, how can we improve it? How can we continuously be interactive within it? So when when um, COVID hit, we really had to take some time to think. And, you know, our, our communities were, were hurting very badly. And, and more so, it was tough seeing the youth because, um, you know, being in rural locations, there's already not really that much stuff to do. So that's when you know, bad habits can form. So it changed for us in terms of what can we do for the kids in our group. Um, so we, we try to create different support systems where um, we assigned um, different individuals to each other to reach out and just be like, hey, how you doing? You know, if you need someone to talk to, different things like that. Um, but what was really important um, was we, we developed care packages because we knew it, is, it was inevitable that some of our members were gonna, were gonna uh, contract COVID. So we really wanted to develop those care packages to kind of cater their needs um, during that downtime. Um, you know, just different foods, different little activities, um, you know, just heartfelt, um, you know, acknowledgement because we, because I mean, you know, COVID has taken a lot of people. So 
you know, it, it's really changed our situation as a whole. But, you know, I think moving forward um, is something that we got to start looking at as well as people are getting vaccinated in some instances. Um, and that's the thing, too, is <laughs> I don't want to get into detail, but my youth council, you know, we've been dealing with a lot of stuff. Um, and, you know, our <laughs> it's sad to say, but our business committee has tried to take out our advisor. So we've been working with that and COVID, different things like that. So, um, you know, I don't know uh, anyone else's, um, I guess you would say financial partnership in all this, but I do know that that was another huge factor that we had to look at as well um, because some of the fundraising um, avenues that we once took weren't available um, in these situations. So, <laughs> you know, it's been, it's been hard all around, but, you know, I think, really communicating, being very transparent with, with the members and trying to get the message through that, you know, we have to stick it out. And that's something that I'm very proud to see. You know, I've only been able to attend a few of these um, regional meetups and mine, but that's something I, would, I, I love to congratulate different youth councils on and advisors because, you know, the ones that are here tonight, you know, there's probably many more out there that wanted to be, but maybe those councils um, didn't sur survive the hit that COVID took on us. So, you know, I'm very thankful for the advisors, for the youth councils, because, you know, this is something that our youth really needs. So the hard work and efforts that you guys are putting in is really making a difference in my eyes. So like, you know, mm -hmm. that's, <laughs> that's kind of, you know, where it's at right now, you know, I'm very thankful and, you know, I want to congratulate you all on that because it's a huge responsibility and, you know, that's the thing. And, and that's something I was talking with uh, one of my council members, my cousin, um, last week about, I was like, man, in unity, you know, um, we started off kind of quickly um, and it was, it, it was tough. And I, I told him, I was like, man, there's a point where I was like, yeah, it's hard right now, but it's going to get easier, but it hasn't, you know, it, there's a new challenge every single year, but it's something that will definitely build um, your group, the structure, a character as an individual. So, I mean, even though these experiences are tough, um, there's a positive side to look at it in terms of development. And that's something that we got to keep in mind as well. As much as things get us down, we got to continue to keep pushing because there's others out there that really need that. So, <laughs> that mean take up too much time. <laughs> no, I'm good. It's good stuff. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. And who else can I? Oh, Lauren Ashley. I don't think I've heard about, or you say you're from Florida. Yeah. Um, so my youth council, they're itty bitty babies. So a lot of what we find on my community, I'm really, it's a really small community. So our chance to interact with them before they become teens and get jobs, um, it's really like from, I'd say a seven years old up to like 12 or 13. So we're like pre-unity. Um, so I really loved what Margaret was saying um, because it really is an opportunity for youth to see like, okay, who do I wanna be in middle school? Who do I wanna be in high school? And then who do I wanna be in college? And all of our youth um, right now, they were having a really hard time adjusting with like online stuff, but I'm really proud of them because they have been doing school remotely. When it comes to Zoom meetings, they're not as intimidated to jump on, you know what I mean? So um, that's what we've been seeing. We only have around five to 10 um, like active members, but they're really amazing in what they're doing. They really look up to you guys and they really like love just to see that there's other natives around them because honestly, um, in our small community, everybody that they know that is native is related to them. So <laughs> outside their cousins, you know, it's amazing to see. Um, and two of them got to attend in Texas. So since Texas, their mind has just been blown. 
um, every time they find something with Unity on Instagram, um, they're like, I saw this guy once at Unity in Texas. And they just get really excited because, um, you know, their whole world has just expanded past their dirt roads. Um, so when it comes to Unity and just making meaningful connections, I personally know as the auntie, um, even though I've told them I worked for Unity for the past however many years, um, it really wasn't as cool until they met you guys, until they saw you on stage or you doing around the fire or um, be like, oh, I drummed with that guy, he helped me sing, you know? So it really is a meaningful impact, especially with youth who are facing so much right now. Um, there's a lot of misinformation around COVID in the, in the South and it's uh, very polarized. So um, I'm just proud of our youth for like keeping with it. And um, they're learning that different communities have different views on how they handle COVID and how we help our elders. And coming up this next week, and I'll pass it back to Elwood, our, our tiny babies are gonna be serving elders and there is kind of like a drive-through. Um, so they have this uh, community um, our town square and they'll be like having a bunch of covered plates and then the elders kind of do a drive through and then they serve them uh, plates and stuff because a lot of times you know the elders they can't um, you know they can't cook a, a five course meal so that's what our little babies are doing in, in Florida so I just want to encourage all of you um, so yeah and Albert do you guys have something coming up too next week right yeah, um, next week um, we're having a virtual Friendsgiving. It's gonna be um, it's gonna uh, it's gonna be a virtual format. You'll be able to create an avatar, but really, it's not it's not really a formal meeting or anything like that. It's really just to um, kind of create some connections, um, just kind of come in and as kind of like a social. Um, I tried before COVID um, each year as one of our projects um, that we we really, we really love to carry out. Um, was we'd plan a social, get everyone to come in, we'd have an activity. Um, but it was really to, like like what was stated earlier uh, was just to kind of get to know everyone. Um, because that, I mean, that's critical is just the connection aspect of it. Um, and that's something that I try to promote throughout this region as well is get to know um, outside your council, you know, different people um, because there may be things that one council has went through that you guys haven't went through. So when it comes to that point, you'll be able to reach out and you'll already have kind of a plan or at least insight on how to address it. Um, and going back to what Lauren Ashley was talking about in terms to um, elder youth interaction, another thing that we did over the um, pandemic was um, it's kind of like a little buddy system, but with our elders. So what we would do is we partnered with our Title VI program and we'd have youth write different letters and they would develop relationships with the elders. Um, so when the when their meals would get delivered, our, our messages would get delivered as well and they would be exchanged the same way. So that was something that was really cool to see as well, um, you know, because we wanted to limit contact um, with them obvious, for obvious reasons. But I mean, it worked out great. So, I mean, just, and that's the thing too, is <clears throat> what you got to continuously uh, remind yourselves and other youth is it's, it's really not about numbers. It's more about the efforts and intention that you have, because that's going to go a lot further than the number side of it. So just keep that in mind too, you know, don't get discouraged because, you know, um, there's many events that we had where there's, you know, maybe one group or just a few people show up, but um, the message still got out and, like I said, later on down the road, it started becoming bigger and bigger and we started to be able to advocate and reach out to many more people. So, you know, just keep that in mind. It's more about the intention than anything and those efforts. So, but yeah, um, next, next, next Saturday, I believe um, it's going to be a virtual Friendsgiving. Like I said, it's just going to be a, a um, very informal kind of layout, but there's gonna be different activities within that virtual um, environment. So I'll send that um, link to Justice as well. So you can kind of get that out to you guys. Great. What about, what about you, Jonathan? 
I know Washington is pretty pretty shut down. Um, could you uh, repeat your question? I was end up getting a phone call real quick there. So, what is uh, your youth council doing to connect with youth during the COVID nineteen pandemic? Um, let's see here. Uh, just as an individual um, and working, I work in the schools as part of my job, uh, working directly with our uh, nearly 500 Native youth was in our district. Um, and so it's, you know, with the whole shutdown, because um, I've been working in the schools for almost three years now, but it's um, with this whole, the entire shutdown due to COVID, uh, the state mandate for the schools, it was, uh, you could really see the impact on our youth, um, not having a social interaction um, and being just put in front of a screen. Um, and that's basically what it's been ran down uh, throughout Indian country and throughout the United States and around the world. And so being able to go full-time face-to-face this year, you can see a positive impact, um, but you can see the impacts of being um, virtual and being in front of a screen uh, for eight hours, how many days that our students had to be in front of a screen. And so you can see the struggles in them to be able to have a, a, a meaningful conversation, an actual full-on conversation. You can see those impacts. You can see that with everybody um, being on just on Google Meets where there's not very little social interaction, you know, cameras off, uh, whatever else. There is, you know, there's no interaction. And so it's unlike it, unlike in our elders days where it was all conversation and people were able to have full on conversations and able to visit for hours. We're not, we're seeing that the social decline. Um, and so, um, you know, for the Northwest region, you know, we were able to have our meetup just as the Great Plains is doing today. And, you know, we've seen a big, uh, big amount show up. And at, at that time, that was the biggest meetup for uh, Unity. Uh, but of, of course, we've grown since we've had these uh, meetups and we're seeing every region starting to really engage. And so uh, when this COVID-19 pandemic started and schools closed, our tribe said, well, what can we do to support? because uh, the school district asked me to serve on a committee to reopen our schools uh, for the fall um, and to really get on a, a phased approach. And so our tribe says, well, we can provide a learning center. Where students can come in one, two days for elementary and two days for the secondary. And so we did that for almost a year uh, until schools started opening up on a hybrid model. And we've seen that influence on our kids, that impact on our kids to have social interaction and to see their relatives and be in their own home and around their own people. And so those were the steps we had to take uh, for our youth to really uh, make sure that they're receiving the services that they need and deserve, uh, rightfully so. And so those are some of the things that we've done locally um, and so, um, you know, we're, we're just, we just have to adapt. Um, and that's what we're all doing, you know, and it, we have to really face the generational intergener the generational trauma and, uh, really face it with, uh, multi-generational strength and wisdom and resiliency, um, and be that generation of leaders that, uh, our creator and our ancestors have called us to be. And so, those are some of the ways that we are doing things locally uh, and we, things that we have done. And we're still uh, through our government to government relationship between our tribe and the school district. Uh, we are making sure, you know, that we can keep our schools open full time and have our staff in there supporting. And so that is part of my role um, as a language teacher in our tribe to really make sure you know, we provide those supports and that we can bring that cultural identity and bridge those disconnects. So, Hot Nixon, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary. And I believe 
that should be everyone except for you, Greg. Because everyone else, like these, the other kids in here are just our, our board members for our chapter. Okay. And real brief, uh, Representative Fox and all those on the call, you know, uh, what, I, what I recognize within my own tribal community, which is the Gila River Indian community that borders South Phoenix, um, their uh, official name is the Akimeroth and Pipash Youth Council. And I was the founder of the Youth Council now in operation now 33 years. Uh, what I noticed that they've been doing during this whole pandemic is that they got really creative because our tribe also placed restrictions for any type of in-person gatherings, et cetera. So they uh, decided to meet virtually and they were their uh, youth council coordinators really innovative when it comes to utilizing different apps different game apps to interact and communicate with young people and um, he became very creative to the point where he was using this as part of their virtual meetings or just like having fun activities like family night game night uh, now they're doing some beating traditional beating culture classes and what i notice about my community uh, is that they are really utilizing our Tribal Youth Council to promote this uh, awareness uh, to get young people vaccinated. And to really, and, there, and our Youth Council has been all over our Tribal social media, doing promotional uh, ads for young people. And because young people will listen to young people. <laughs> I mean, of course, they'll listen to mom and dad and their teachers and their principals. But, you know, uh, our tribal government uh, utilized our youth council by having them present messages to their peers. And I, I myself as a tribal member found that very effective way to communicate with their peers. And so... I'm really proud of our tribal youth from my community, and they really took an active role in that during this whole pandemic. And they were with uh, Steve Harvey last night during the regional Western Regional Meetup, so they were very involved and active. So I have to say that you know all tribes are different. You know we're structured differently, uh, different uh, systems of government. You know so. Uh, I have to respect all tribes, you know, they, they have their own ways, their own methods, you know, just like Margaret mentioned, you know, they use the uh, in school, you know, as a way to uh, continue to keep the young people together. You know, I, I applaud uh, MHA for doing that to, to, to keeping the young people safe there. Um, but, you know, like I said, we're all different, you know, what there's 500, some federally recognized Indian tribes throughout the country, you know, and we're all different. And so we're finding different ways to be innovative, uh, try to keep our young people. I think that's the most important thing is keeping our young people active and aware of what's happening. And so that's my contribution to the question. Thanks. Thank you, Greg. And we would now we move on to the next question, right? Well, and, and I just wanted to mention to uh, Representative Fox and all of those on the call, and because, uh, you know, this is going to be actually one of the last meetups uh, for all the 10 regions of unity. Uh, you're the last one, uh, Mr. Fox. Yeah. Uh, and when we talk about the question, what kind of resources could unity offer uh, as a staff member? I know that we will continue to offer conferences, uh, webinars, uh, as we do with our unity cohorts, like the unity executive committee that uh, Mr. Fox is a member of, our earth ambassadors, our peer guides, they have been all using the Zoom meeting platform uh, to meet uh, monthly, you know, and, uh, there we do uh we have provided webinars in the past and now we have a native youth sing series that's going on throughout the month of november 
in recognition of Native American Heritage Month. So we have a Native Youth Sing Series that's going on this month. So um, uh, these are just some of the uh, resources and I'll discuss resources on our next item on the agenda, uh, Mr. Fox. So uh, uh, as a staff member, I could just tell you that these are the resources that we are providing. Um, and then I'll go into more in our next uh, item on the agenda. Thank you. Wait, so Greg, um, I could I could just ask you for another like web like a Zoom like meeting thing if I am able yes. to contact uh, other uh, youth councils in our region. Yes. Okay. We, we could get that set up for you, sir. Okay. Thank you. So then. What next is on the agenda? So are we, are you asking us the question, what kind of resources could you need? Yeah. Offer? Yes, okay. Margaret. So I have a question as for a resource. Now, I really like that we're doing these regional meetings and we get on this Zoom and everything. What I would like to see more of is more, because I know you guys are talking about technology and, um, and I know this is so hard, like, because like we talk about um, being on screen constantly, but I could see where, we have our chapters actually, you know, where we were talking about how they get creative with each other. It would be nice where um, this chapter this month holds something online to reach out to the other chapters within that region and does like an actual event of sorts with everyone. Um, you know what I mean? And just have fun with it or watch tonight. We're going to watch smoke signals and let's have questions or smoke signals, bingo. Do you get what I'm saying? And yes. then you have, you have that because there's another thing is that I think a lot of students now are getting to the point where they think like online is just, it's negative. You know what I mean? They're putting this negative connotation on it because all I have to do is read and learn and listen to my teacher and ugh, you know what I mean? So how can we make it where, when you get on this Zoom call and you're working with Unity, where it's not just that, it's actually fun and we're doing something fun together in this region. Or what about if we did a, a uh, North, or, um, Great Plains did an activity for Southwest or you know what I mean? Somewhere else or something like that. And that also brings that connection again, not just with our, our region, but everyone else that goes to unity that we're going to see at mid-year or nationals. I just think that's a really, I, I don't know. You guys are just, whoever said it, I think it was who somebody said something about that they were doing online. And I thought that was really cool. And I can't remember somebody else said something. Oh, care packages. Mm -hmm. We could do care packages for another chapter. Do like almost like a secret Santa kind of like deal. You know what I mean? Like, hey, I'm going to put all my, my, my favorite colors blue. I love this, blah, blah, blah. You got my name. I'm sending it to South Region, to that Unity chapter, and they're going to go and send me an awesome care package, and then I get one from them. You know, like a, do you know what I'm saying? Yes. I really like these ideas, you guys. I, I mean, I'm, as I was sitting here, I was like, how can we make this work? Because I feel like, again, like I said, there's so many negative right now on Zoom and there's so many negative about, I don't want to follow these COVID restrictions and these COVID things. I just want to live again. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, how can we make some of these items that are kind of like just a dread for us? How can we make them exciting and fun for everyone? in our regions or even outside of our regions, because I really like that idea, like some of these ideas that you've said, but can we make them bigger? Yes. Lauren, Ashley, you have anything to offer there? I think I'm she so brought up some really good idea. ideas. Yes, we absolutely love that idea. And I know um, we did fun and games nights when auction, uh, not auction, I'm sorry, Akmilatum, uh hosted some of those and i think that would be so cool what if even if we did like um yesterday they mentioned like a family feud res style and like you could have like region versus region and they could like you know need as love brackets we can make a little brackets and see who's the winner which region would be the winner and 
it's open to anybody. And I think yesterday, one thing that we really heard was um, there was college students jumping on and they kind of were like, I don't belong to a youth council, but I want to be involved. And so, and they wanted to reach out and connect with other native youth in their region. So that even offers, I love what you're saying. I think we can definitely arrange this and um, do something, even if it's like, um, I love the idea of like secret Santa, we could, you know, call it whatever we need to for the holidays. <laughs> um, but we, if anybody signs up, then, you know, Unity can arrange that. And I think it's something that we can do because we want to do it. Um, and I think the regions are super competitive anyway. So let's like do some games or game night or something. I just have a vision of like watching smoke signals together and us getting, um, you know, Thomas to jump on, you know, or somebody, you know, like we could totally do that, you know, Dr. Evan Adams, you know, like, hey, come watch smoke signals with me. And so it would be super cool. We can totally do this, you know. Or like a basketball night or something. Cause you know, we let us, a lot of our students like to watch basketball. We could do like an online, let's watch this game together. Can we get, like you were saying, any special guests or just like, um what is that called like fantasy football but with basketball you know what I mean like things like that there's just I think there's so much more we could do to make it you know exciting okay great and uh you know justice our executive committee meets on Sunday you could share all these great ideas to the full executive committee about all these activities like regional competition Maybe Great Plains is going to challenge the Rocky Mountain Youth Councils, you know, fun competition, you know, just, and it's going to be all in fun. Maybe uh, Res Family Night, uh, what Great Plains versus the Western Region or something, you know, something like that, you know, you know, to get everyone involved, you know, and we could do that. And again, just as you'll have that opportunity to report out at the executive meeting on Sunday, you know, so. Thank you, Margaret. Great ideas. I just want to add one more thing to the list of you got my like creative juices flowing, but hand games, you can do virtual hand games like online and it's a great way. It's a seasonal right now. A lot of hand games are going on and you could challenge or teach, you know, one region could teach another one like our hand games or like, you know, so I think that would be super cool. And we can Maybe like a youth uh, cultural night or youth cultural exchange, you yeah. know? Yeah. MHA, uh, MHA uh, culture exchange with the San Carlos Apache tribe or something, you know? Yeah. So yeah. that they could exchange cultures, get to know each other, uh, the foods, the songs, the dances, you know, sing with MHA, you know? They could share their thoughts about their idea. culture, you know, their dancing, their singing. You know, or games or things like that that are. Yeah. So, I can really, I can really see that challenge between uh, uh, Justice and Steve because they always uh, tease each other. So. Okay. Action. There you go. Good ideas. I love them. So I um I asked um our my my unity chapter group chat just now what they what kind of resources they um think that what's it um unity could offer and they said one of them said food and so what I thought it was like maybe the different um like cultures could share like different recipes and like just have that like so they could try to make what um. Make, I'm trying to make it and like ask them um, how to and like what um, what what the reason about reasoning behind the food is because I know we have in our culture I have reasonings behind most of our food and the recipes and why it's called what it's called. Oh, I love that you guys could go live like you are now on YouTube with like okay, you know, Justice is gonna teach us how to make bennet bread or, or a meat pie or, you know, like, and you're all in the kitchen, like, all right, Unity, first you go and get a good woman. No, just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a cooking show. It'd be so cool. 
Res style. <laughs> Good. And you guys know I don't cook. There you go. That could have been your lie that you say good food. <laughs> good. Okay, these are good ideas. Thank you. Okay. So will the next one be technical assistance? And I think this goes into a little bit about like the toolkit that when we talk about that, but um, yeah, so technical assistance, um, it basically means if there's any trainings um, that you think would be good. Some um, that were brought up like yesterday were, um, there's a lot of people who are like transitioning from like being in unity to like becoming an advisor. So it's a, like that graduation stage. And they even mentioned like when they came to unity and, and Texas, they were kind of nervous to go into the like, you know, advisor room because um, they're like, okay, I want to be an advisor, but I'm not there yet. So um, they talked about like making that um, you know, like for youth who are 20 something and want to go into being an advisor, that that could be a training. Could you think of anything else, like any other trainings you think might be needed for Unity, not just for your region, but anywhere? So what was the question again? I, I, okay. <laughs> Is there any trainings that you think um, Unity could provide um, that would help be helpful? Um, yes, actually, because um, like maybe like a, maybe like a, a uh, like a kind of like a instructions or maybe like a, just a, to help to help the, the children or like the, the youth that just uh, start out, like they just start out in the, a chapter and there's not like much to teach them. Maybe like a, like kind of like instructions or like a, like I know we have the bylaws, but that's kind of like, that's just like about unity, but like more of how to, um, what to expect and what to, um, how to how to present yourself um, in at the conference and stuff because most of our chapter are first years. Mm -hmm. So they just like, they just heard about it and like, um, they just, they, they thought it was cool and so they wanted to join, but a lot of them don't really understand and fully like grasp the, con the concept of what unity is. And so, and so it's kind of hard to teach them with like just me and Margaret and um, just a few others of the, the people that have had experience there. So like, I think that would, that would be good. There's something that, um because I serve on the National Congress of American Indians Youth Commission, we're talking about how we can really have like what you might call professional development for our youth commission, um, whether it's uh, really going through the Roberts Rules of Orders, how to chair a meeting, um, how, because I always, uh, I was, ran, I ended up chairing a meeting the other day and I ran it differently than how the others do. I call for an I and nays and abstain and they didn't know what to think I was like okay well they need some they need to get seasoned up they need to get that seasoning uh you know going and so you know for instance if they go to their legislators or they go to their congressmen you know that they can learn how to address them how they address their school board their tribal council um because those are also important you know and we find that as a youth commission at uh, NCAI, you know, we have those opportunities where we can do that, how we run a meeting, how we establish a quorum, all those type of things. And so I think that'll be helpful to not just, you know, for instance, not just Great Plains or just the youth commission at NCAI, but all these uh, youth councils and youth commissions, all these committees that we can uh, really season them up and how to really do these things because these are our uh, future tribal leaders and they need to be able to know how to address them. And I, um, 
you know, find that extremely important when I, especially when I present myself to uh, any uh, distinguished leaders. So that's something that I put out there, you know, some type of uh, etiquette, meeting etiquette um, and the importance of the chair of the meeting. And uh, so but that's my two cents. Uh, I just want to piggyback off of that 100% everything he said Robert's rule of order is a definite must and I know like in our bylaws it says how do you establish your you look at there it says, how do you establish your your um quorum chapter your chapter how do you establish your chapter it says and it gives you all these things but most of the time no one's going to read that you know what I mean that's the honest truth almost like you need a video and you got to okay. show them <laughs> You gotta show them on this video. And that's true. You really do. Um, I'm so glad that you guys are saying this because it really ties into our toolkit. Our toolkit. Awesome. Yes. That you, that, everything you're saying. Yes. 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 So that's kind of, I, I, yeah. yeah, I agree with everyone else. That's kind of what we, like, I noticed too, like, as an advisor, you go into the meetings as an advisor and they tell you all these things. And sometimes I'm sitting there thinking, like, should I be listening to this or should this be really the chapter <laughs> that listens to how to fundraise? You know what I'm saying? Um, and we, again, like they said, that this is, this is our future. We want to start getting them prepared to mm -hmm. how to fundraise. How do you dress at a professional, <laughs> professional development or whatever it may be? How do you get um, your introduction together? If you want to submit to be on um, the board or a committee of sorts, how are you doing that? What they need a um, they need my bio. What you know what I mean? Or they need yeah. a resume. What you know? Some of these that's just what they go through. They don't know these things, and I feel like sometimes um, you know, not everyone has the opportunity to talk to their English teacher or will, you know what I mean? Or ask those those really really important questions. And I think for us um, as unity, that's something that we can provide, especially for not just one chapter, like they're saying, or one region. This is something I think that needs to be shared, you know, amongst all of our native youth. Yes. Thank you for sharing that, Mar Margaret. I did that at a, a, our recent uh, government to government meeting. And I, you know, I addressed the president of the our chairwoman was there, so I addressed our chairwoman, our president of the board, vice president of the board, uh, the superintendent, members of the board, superintendent, and everybody else. They just started talking. I was like, oh, okay, I guess that's just me because I'm in politics all the time. So, <laughs> and uh, I just found it interesting. I was like, okay, some of these guys haven't really got that experience, but um, you know, it just sticks with me. So, um, you know, that etiquette, especially when they're addressing. Um, and I think Greg sets that example when he addresses the executive committee at our meetings, you know. So I think uh, really uh, putting that in place, you know, that etiquette for every all of us. So. Representative Fox, let's segue into the next item. As Margaret mentioned, uh, we are working, when we talk about providing resources, for Unity Youth Councils. Uh, we are currently working on the development of a Youth Council Toolkit. And the whole purpose of this toolkit is to, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that what we found, particularly during this pandemic, that a lot of our affiliated youth councils became very inactive during the pandemic uh, for a lot of reasons, as mentioned, government, uh, we're placing restrictions on programs, departments, uh, schools, you name it. You know, we were all affected by the pandemic. And so we thought it was good to begin to think, what kind of resources can we help to help provide that support for our UDN youth councils? And so this idea was conceived of putting together a toolkit, and it's all going to be developed by young people. And we're going to use video platforms like a Margaret mentioned, but it's going to be driven by our unity leadership. So uh, when I talk about the unity leadership, I'm talking about all the unity cohorts like the executive committee, our earth ambassadors, our peer guides, 
will be a part of this whole process. And so this gives you an outline of the contents that will go into the toolkit. And we just hired recently a young man who served on the executive committee. His name is Will Mosley. And he is very skilled in videography. And he is a photographer. Uh, he knows uh, video editing. So he's gonna be responsible for helping Unity staff work with all of the Unity cohorts to videotape all of these different segments that you see listed on the content here. We are wanting to, uh, uh, to showcase this before or at the Unity Mid-Year Conference in Phoenix in February. So where you see those that are highlighted, you'll see some staff, you'll see some youth, that are already committed to helping us put this together. So uh, we'll definitely recruit uh, Justice to help us out in this effort as a member of the executive committee. But you'll see we'll, we have it in two parts. The first part is getting started and you'll see all of that. As mentioned, um, uh, Margaret, we will have like a sample uh, basic parliamentary procedures uh, what is the sample tribal resolution? You know, how can we get a resolution to the tribal council, you know, for their approval, you know, and it'll be all in video format, you know, so how, what are the steps to organizing a youth council? So we'll have a young person describe those steps. Also, like, what are the duties of youth council members? So we'll have a young person talk about what are your duties as a member? duties of the officers. We have our youth council, uh, we have the co-president Audrey committed to doing that, providing duties of what officers are, are supposed to be doing. What is the unity creed? What is the unity honor code, et cetera? And then we'll go into resources. What is, we'll give you the basics of unity 101, uh, some sample projects. What is a sample environmental project? Healthy lifestyles something on mental wellness, education, et cetera. Then we'll talk about the Unity membership. We'll have information about all the Unity programs. So again, this is a work in progress. So we're very happy that we're putting this together for the Unity affiliates. And we're hoping to have this completed before February. For before the mid-year, it'll be uh, showcased at the mini Unity mid-year conference. So. Just wanting you all to know that this is a work in progress. Any questions? And if you want to film any of these or be involved, you know, feel free to volunteer. Um, you know, December is coming up and that's really when we'll be scheduling the recording. Um, so Mr. Fox or anybody from, you know, Great Plains or Secretary, um, Mr. Elwood, any of you, um, if you see a section that doesn't have a name next to it, we want it to be youth driven. Um, but you know, if nobody signed up for it, then a staff will have to step in. So we're trying to get as many youth on here as possible. So yeah, what do you guys and think? Is this kind of what you were envisioning? Hi, I see you with a cute puppy. <laughs> yeah, this was, this was exactly what I was envisioning actually. This is it's crazy. Oh, there's Elijah. Hey, Elijah. We miss you, we miss you, we miss you. Um, but yes, thank you, Margaret. You had some awesome vision there because we were you were thinking just like what we were doing here. So thank you, Margaret, for your thoughts there. So this is a work, this is a work in progress. So uh, uh, Mr. Fox, uh, Mr. Uh, Elwood, this will be brought to the executive committee on Sunday. Uh, I am happy to see that the our Madam President's on the call. So she's well aware that the executive committee is gonna be involved in the development of this toolkit. So again, hopefully by the next meeting, we'll see that it's all filled up and it's all gonna be driven by young people. So any questions about the toolkit? If not, I want to share a really cool thing to all of you guys. I want to introduce it to you right now. And uh, it's really good to see Elijah. 
You're doing awesome. What's your uh, friend's name there, El uh, Elijah? Uh, her name is Lulu. Uh, Lulu? Yep, Shunka Luna. <laughs> awesome. Okay, what I want to introduce to you, and I want to thank our Unity representatives. Uh, they all had a part in the development of phase two of the Unity website. We have a new uh, section now under Youth Councils. You'll see all of the different regions represented here. And so if you go down to say the Great Plains region, just uh, go there and then tap on to the uh, Great Plains there. And then where is it? It's gonna pop up. Come on. <laughs> My, I need a new computer, guys. Okay, let's see here. But what we, we're very proud of this because right here, there you go, the Great Plains region here. So uh, this is still a work in progress. So if you click right here, you'll get a little information about Justice Fox here. You see his name, his title, and his email. So please email uh, Mr. Fox, with your concerns, your issues, uh, Mr. Fox put this regional description together, and then you'll see a bio on your representative, uh, get to know your representative there, uh, look, looking really sharp there in his bio, he has a long bio, look at this guys, so it's really cool that he can do this, introduce himself, but what's really cool about this new feature on the um, website here is that uh, you guys could go here and then we have an interactive sort of map. And uh, what's gonna be really cool about this, uh, this um, um, feature now is that um, all the activities within the Great Plains region uh, we could begin to post those to the uh, Great Plains uh, page. So uh, those that are on the call, Margaret, all those that are on the call, you guys could uh, begin to share some of your meetings, your activities, begin to post uh, some of your uh, activities within the Great Plains region. So just work with, um, with uh, Justice there. And uh, we'll uh, work with Lauren Ashley, who does a lot of work with our website. And uh, we'll get that information uh, posted in your page. So right now, all we have is the introduction and the description. But what we want to do is promote the, the different activities within the Great Plains region. So this is going to be your page. So I'm trying to pull up the actual um, map. So the map is really cool. And uh, any questions about this new feature? You want to tell them what you think about this new feature, Elijah? I think that's so much, so much better compared to the, the Facebook, at least in my opinion. Cool. <laughs> to hand it from uh, one, one uh, representative to the other is right such an easier way. instead of like the facebook thing that we were doing and then like because we couldn't get on our or get on the great plains for like ever still can't but i love that you guys have done this amazing i applaud you good work so guys see go right here guys this is your region right here in purple see it pops up uh there's justice fox there so it, it is uh if just go into the map, you'll go into all of the different regions and then uh, you'll have all the representatives of the Unity uh, Executive Committee. Uh, we also are gonna have a, a page for the Unity co-presidents as well. And we're working on that as well. But uh, it's a work in progress. And I want the Great Plains region to know that uh, your representative, uh, Justice Fox, uh, um, was involved in developing his description for the region and all of that. So uh, he's, he was very instrumental in getting that um, included. So, so this is really cool. We're very thankful to have this. You'll see all the representatives from all the regions. And again, we're very proud of this. So it's, it's exciting. <laughs> so 
this is just wanting you guys to know that this is something new that we added to the website. Lauren Ashley, you have any comments? Yes, and we're working on how um, it can be really simple and easy, even um, if it's just a photo with a quote, similar to like Instagram, you know, it, not everybody likes to write long blogs, but even if it's like, hey, we went to our tribal parade, or today we learned how to make moccasins, or like rock your mocks, you know, it can be just simple posts like that. Um, but it really will be up to each individual like region to make to to make those posts. So I'll be working really closely with you. Um, and also, you know, if any of the other groups that you know in your region have like newsletters, we can put the links there to all the different newsletters or if like your school's doing something cool, um, you just send me the link and I'll post it right away. So we're really excited to fill up your page with amazing photos and it can be past um, images as well. Um, you know, what was the last really big event you guys did? Because then other people are gonna take like um, inspiration from what you've done or they're like, oh, we should do that too, you know? So, um, so yes, we're excited and we're here and we're ready and waiting for content. So even like last night during one of the um, meetups at the regional um, meetup for Western, they sent us a photo of their Native American Heritage Day like recognitions and it's already uploaded. So um, we're really excited we're to launch this. So again, we just wanted to share with you guys uh, what we're doing, uh, you know, um, yeah, in providing resources to all of you here on the call. And your representative, Fox, has done a wonderful job helping us out in that effort. So just letting you know, we're very proud of him. And we'll go on to the next item, which is the Unity Update. So with that, thank you, everyone. Okay, I think I'm next. So there are three easy ways that you guys can get involved um, with Unity. Um, right now we're collecting surveys um, with feedback. And I know surveys sound boo, kind of boring, um, but I entered it in the chat so you guys um, can share with anyone. They don't have to be in Unity, but anybody can participate in this and they can earn a $45 gift certificate just for participating. So Christmas is coming. You wanna buy something nice for your mom, uh, get, get that gift card. <laughs> All you have to do is participate in this. Um, in this survey. So it is called the Youth and Young Adults um, COVID-19 Impact Survey. And so all it is, is it's asking you about your experience, about like what you've been through. So real quick, I want you guys to get in the chat box. Everybody pull up the chat. And I want you to type, what are three things that got you through COVID-19? I already told you guys, mine was like, I bought a bunch of rabbits and a bunch of chickens and I just went like Farmer Joe and pretended the world didn't exist. <laughs> and then the third thing, Netflix, just being real. I was all about Netflix, right? Like uh, went from real to tradish outside and then I was binging Netflix. Um, so let's see in the chat. Let's see, what are three things that um, really helped you through the pandemic, help you cope, help you stay sane, self-care, um, bubble baths. I see that in the chat. Um, what else? Um, and anybody can type in. So Mr. Fox, since it's your region, what are your three? What were your three things that helped you through the pandemic? Do you want to type in the chat or? Oh, you can say them out loud. It's all right. My two things were, uh, working out uh, uh, during when it was like really tough. I just like, just did my homework because that's all I could do. <laughs> yeah. There's like no school. I know like in person school, so it was just online. So I was like, mm. might as well just do my work. Yes. Yeah. And then sleeping. Oh my God, I slept so much. It's just... <laughs> you never <laughs> did <laughs> like grandpa bear okay so in the chat we have video games those are awesome video games family online interactions with friends yes meetups elijah netflix video games and sweat 
sweat is so important. Um, we have young men who do sweat. Um, we kind of tease them because in Florida, that's like all the time, just with the humidity. <laughs> but no, sweat is amazing. I'm glad you have a, a location you can do that. Music, Netflix, and art. Yes, it was so important for art and expression. Jesse says, family, my dogs, and the internet. Yes, the internet. Elijah and Landon times two and sleeping. Yes, yes. <laughs> Sleeping, sleeping, FaceTime, TV, and Zoom and sleep. Yes, all day, every day. So this survey that I was telling you guys about, we're really trying to get um, people from ages 14 to 24 to tell them about their experiences during the pandemic. Just like you just told me, you told me your coping skills and how you made it through. Um, but it's a screener, so meaning they're going to ask um, if they can contact you in six months, because in six months, who knows where we would be. Maybe the pandemic will be over, fingers crossed. Maybe we'll like be in a new Delta variant, whatever. Who knows? I won't speak that into life, um, <laughs> but maybe we'll be done in six months. But to be selected and to be, um, be chosen for this uh, survey and to receive the 45 uh $45 gift card, you have to select yes, that they can contact you in six months. So we see Secretary Jonathan, he put family, prayer, and Native youth, other Native youth. Yes. Margaret, my puppy, ceremony, teaching youth resilience. Yes, yes, yes. And then Greg, we have family, hiking, and church. Greg is so awesome. He's like up at 4 a.m. like hiking a mountain while we're like making coffee. Still in our pajamas, so... Good job. I'm going to challenge the EC to join me one of these days. So the second one, we want to um, really get you guys' feedback because we know the holidays are coming. And for COVID-19, we just want people to be educated and make sure that they're gathering in safe ways, that you get tested before um, you go and see your elders, if need be, or um, before you go to any family gatherings. So we need your help. So in the chat, I just uh, did a link, um, and it's for a partnership we have with Illuminatives. Are you, anybody, raise your hand if you know who Illuminatives are, or if you've seen or heard of them before. They're really cool. Um, they're amazing. They do a lot of really, um, like, um, like social justice movements and you know getting uh, advocacy on different issues. So they've partnered with us and they want to hear um, our Unity Youth feedback on their videos. So literally all you have to do is watch a YouTube video um, and give your feedback. Like, do you think this is what Native youth want to hear? Do you want to see more messaging like this? Or you're like, eh, this isn't it. I don't, I don't think so. Or is this too pushy? You know, we just want your honest feedback on these videos that Illuminative made um, to help keep our um, our people safe during the holidays. So if you click on that link, you'll just watch the videos and give your feedback. And that will actually directly impact whatever Unity messages go out this holiday for um, in partnership for the love of our people. Like we love our people, so we wanna be safe. That whole campaign will be built on whatever feedback we get in this link. So, and then the last one, if you were in attendance at, um, that's number two. So number three is the NAYS survey. Um, so I wanna know in the chat, I want you to tell me what is your favorite res slang, has to be appropriate, but what is your favorite res slang word? Like some people say Z bones, some people say not even, or if they're all, all cool to me, or uh, all bad to me or um, Z, what is another one? A, nays, niche, Elijah, hopefully I'm saying that right. Hopefully I said it right. Yes, okay, niche, oh, Z, E, J. Uh, I met these uh, amazing Apache girls over the weekend and they and they just kept laughing. They go, e, e, and I can't even do it. And they were just laughing and <laughs> I was like, geez, I, I need to learn all these. Nays, big Z. Absolutely, all of these. So we actually created a survey called NAYS. So Jesse, our, he has to take the NAYS survey. It stands for Native American Youth Experience Survey. And we totally named it just so it could be NAYS. We had Chun, what does Chun mean? Did I do it right? Hopefully, oh no, hopefully 
think I say this right. I'm from Florida, okay? <laughs> we just say like, bless your heart. And that's not a good one. Great job, Justice. I have our, oh, uh, Secretary Jonathan is saying great job, Justice. It's been really good. Um, so yes, I'm gonna give you the NAE survey and the link as Justice finishes up tonight. But this is our way of collecting like your feedback on what are the needs of our community. So the executive committee will be announcing on at the mid-year what their national initiative is. Like what is everybody in the Unity Network gonna focus on for year 2022-23? So what is that issue? And so to get your feedback, we need you to um, take the NAYS survey. So those are three quick surveys that um, you can get your feedback and um, participate um, in like helping inform the EC what issues they should be tackling. Okay, so thank you so much for your time. And I'll turn it back over to you, Mr. Fox. Do you guys have any questions about those? I learned some MHA slang. I want to go tell everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, we have to correct. It's not actually the ones that we put are actually kind of from, they're from Sandy Rock. <laughs> <laughs> Even better. We used Even to live better. there. <laughs> <laughs> Good, he's out. This is even better, even better. I'm world traveler in slang now. And our next uh, Unity t-shirt is just going to be all these words, it's just collage. <laughs> all right, Mr. Fox, I'll hand it over to you just to get some more updates and you guys can see them here on your screen as well. All right. Wait, do you want me to beat these or just uh, continue with me? Oh, you want me to beat them? Okay, so. The NUC executive committee, executive committee members attending the National Congress of American Indians Convention, October 7 through 12, 2021 virtually. The NUC executive committee submitted a I Will Live initiative resolution to bring awareness of suicide works to bring further attention to the American Indian slash Alaska Native suicide epidemic in the midst of the global COVID-19 pandemic. The resolution passed through the NCIA or AI Human Resources Committee, the Health, Health Committee, and the full General Assembly. That was pretty cool. Uh, another one is Unity Earth, Ambas Earth Ambassadors participated and prepared written statements for the U.S. Department of Interior listening session on tribal youth and climate change on October 13, 2021. And then Unity was represented at the National Indian Education Association Convention, October 12 to, uh, 12 to 16, 2021 in Omaha, Nebraska, the Ansar region. Unity staff label are tabled and conducted a workshop. Uh, Unity Fall 2021 Regional Native Youth Meetups, October, November 2021, October, uh, Unity 25 under 25 national Recogni recognition program application opens January 22nd, 2022. And then you know, uh, Unity Mid-Year Conference, February 25th to 27th, 2020, Hilton Phoenix Resort at the peak, Phoenix, Arizona. And then the National Unity Conference is July 7th through 12th, 2022, Hilton, Minneapolis, in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Thank you. And just to let you guys know, um, our early bird rates are going to increase on December 1st. So tell everybody that you know, right now, between now and December 1st, you can attend both mid-year and nationals for $500 registration. Um, and there's a, a purchase order option. So what that means, yes, what that means is like you can lock in these rates um, and if you're still needing to work with your tribes or they can send a purchase order and that holds your, your spots. Um, that way you can work with people. So please tell everybody. <laughs> And I also want to add that uh, we have a really active, we're ready 
in planning for the mid-year and for the national conferences. Uh, mid-year conference in February is the best weather in Phoenix. So you have to come out to Phoenix, Margaret, in February and bring Elijah for sure and the dog. And uh, definitely the Great Plains representative will be there. Uh, but uh, we have a really active local planning committee from Minneapolis already, and they're starting to be uh, very active. I know our executive committee, our executive director met with them yesterday, and they're all excited. And we're hoping to bring more young people to Minneapolis in July. Uh, as you know, our Dallas conference was limited uh, in Dallas to less than a hundred, I believe, a thousand, I believe. Um, but we're hoping to get more than that uh, for the conference coming up in July. So just uh, we'll keep you posted and we'll continue to provide you updates through email, through e-blast and through our website. So please uh, look at all that information. So Representative Fox, I look forward to you challenging another youth council for hand games yeah. or whatever you choose, a game yeah. of your choosing. Just uh, just this Indigenous Day, I learned how to play uh, hand games, so that would be, be pretty fun, pretty cool. That would be awesome. Cool. So, uh, something I wanted to uh, acknowledge was that I learned that Greg Mendoza has been working with Unity since 1985. I happened to just know about the history, like timeline. That was the first year. That was the year the first youth council was uh, established. So that's that's crazy. But that also tells you how old I am, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. You know what? You never get old with Unity. You know, huh? Huh, Margaret? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we love unity. We love working with youth because it keeps us young, huh, Margaret? Keeps us young. So they we love. Keep us young. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that, uh, Justice. <laughs> I look forward to meeting all of you in person. And you can tell me, like, come up to me and say, like, hey, I listened to you ramble on at a meetup, like, you know, or whenever we meet in person, don't be afraid to come up to us and talk to us and introduce yourselves. And we're so excited. Um, Audrey, is there anything else you'd like to share, Madam President? Hey, guys, I just want to say great job to Justice for uh, conducting our, um, this regional meetup. And I hope that everybody on the call got to learn uh, something new about Unity, if you're new to Unity, or just got to reconnect with each other. Um, yeah, we're so excited to be having these re regional meetups over Zoom, and we're just happy to reconnect with Unity again. So thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, President. Um, my closing thoughts to uh, all of you is, on behalf of Unity, we want to thank you. We want to thank you for, uh, uh, first of all, I want to thank the leadership of Justice Fox and the Great uh, Great Plains region for your participation tonight. Uh, you are a valued member of our Unity Network, and we love to continue to work with all of you uh, through this new, through this, you know, what we're experiencing now. Um, but things are looking up for us and for uh, for the country, you know, slowly but surely. Uh, we're opening up and uh, we'll see, um, you know, definitely uh, we, we respect all the tribes and, and, and what they're doing for their people. So, again, we I want to thank you for being on the call and we look forward to continuing this dialogue. You've offered some really good insight on, uh, on some ideas on what we can do to help improve our communication, how to uh, program it, uh, activities, et cetera. So thank you, you guys are awesome. Justice, Representative Fox, any closing, sir? I'd like to thank uh, Elwood and the secretary for coming and supporting uh, my meetup. Also, Audrey, the president, and Lauren Ashley and Mary Kim, who was here, and the ones that and the ones that could make it to the call, and, and Elijah Landon, that's a former 
uh, Great Plains representative to go, you know. <laughs> good. Well, we want to thank everyone. Have a good night. Go have some dinner now. All right, thank Bye. you. Bye. Good night, everyone. Good job, Justice. Good, job. good to see you, Margaret, Elijah. Good to see you. Bye, everyone.